A dying reality. A universe that's fading away. A merciless world that gets sick and vanishes. No past, no present, no future. Only the impending moment of dead synchronicity ahead. Will you be able to stop it? Because otherwise, what will you do when time dissolves itself? So guys, welcome to Dead Synchronicity. Tomorrow comes today, a game very clearly named in a way to indicate that there's going to be more than one game in the Dead, in the Dead Synchronicity series. Very interesting. The art about this game seems to suggest that it might even be, might be some kind of weird... It might have some kind of sort of like... World War II concentration camp thing going on or something. But then you see the store, that little blurb right there, and that's like, what? It's about time just destroying itself. And it's an adventure game, point and click, so... I don't know what to expect from this one, aside from perhaps rubbing one thing against another thing in order to try to open a door. You know, the usual. Let's get started. Just hope he wakes up one of these days. Come on, my friend. Hang on. Don't give up. Please. Wake up, Michael. Come on, you have to wake up. Wow. Hell of a thing to start off with pink text saying, Come on, wake up. You gotta wake up. I'm immediately thinking of, uh, it just took me straight back to Red vs. Blue in a way that I wasn't expecting to think about today. Alright, so, it seems like we've been in, I was gonna say hospital, but we haven't, we, they couldn't call a doctor. I've been on the verge of death for some span of time now. What's happening? What is this place? Please, tell me. What's happening? What is this place? Please, tell me! Please, Michael, wake up. Wake up! This silence. And this darkness. Where am I? Damn it. I can't... I can't remember. Where are you? Where are you hiding? Michael, please wake up. You have to wake up. Michael? Is that my name? Please tell me where I am. I... I can't remember anything. Who are you? Who's there? Wake up, Michael. Please wake up. Wake up now. Don't go! Uh, please! Uh, come back! Come back! This silence. This darkness. This emptiness. Slight criticism of the voice acting so far. It's, it's, it's more like the editing, really. It seems like it should probably have pauses between some of these lines a little more than it does so far. It's got an inventory screen in the top corner of the screen, but we can't do much from that. I think I can also access it from- yep. So I can also scroll down and up to make it come in without clicking up there. Alright. There's apparently a lamp in front of me. Act 1. A camp full of rats. Well, hello. What a place to wake up in. Good morning. I hope you're feeling better. Uh, but... Now don't be alarmed. I'm glad you feel strong enough to get out of bed. 
That's wonderful news. I must say you're looking much better, considering what you've been through, of course. Who are you? Ah, yes, of course. Forgive my manners. You've been with us uh, for so long that I forgot that you don't know who we are. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Rod Atkinson. I'm, well, I was. I was the director of the municipal property registry before, well, you know, before the world collapsed on us. Ah, pleased to meet you, Mr. Atkinson. But where am I? What is this place? You are in what I venture to call our home. Our humble, hopefully temporary home. This is one of the many trailers that make up the refugee camp. And believe me, we can consider ourselves lucky to live between these four walls. Most of the inhabitants of this hellhole, excuse my crude language, have nothing more than plastic tarps and cardboard for shelter. Wait a second. Did you say refugee camp? Yes, of course. The facility for temporary accommodation of disaster victims is what they called it. You know, after the army declared martial law following the catastrophe, you look a little confused, if you don't mind my saying so. Do you really not know what I'm talking about? I, I don't know. I'm afraid not. Let me ask you. Can you tell me what I'm doing here? Yes, of course. I think we owe you an explanation. A few days after the great wave, we found you lying in a ditch near the airport. You were badly injured and unconscious. We couldn't just leave you there. Someone had already stolen your luggage and identification. It was awful. So we decided to take care of you ourselves and brought you here. You've been with us ever since. By the way, I should tell you that when we found you, your clothes were ripped to shreds, so we threw them away. The clothes you're wearing now are mine. You'll find more things in that wardrobe. If you need anything, just help yourself. Thank you, Mr. Atkinson. But... You said, with us. Who else lives here? Ah, yes, of course. I still haven't properly introduced my family to you. Now is a bad time, but I promise to make proper introductions later. My wife and I sleep in the other room, and, well, little Colin sleeps with us. Colin? Yes, Colin is our only child. Our one ray of hope since the catastrophe. I'm going to confess something to you. Colin is the only reason my wife and I still struggle to keep going in this new world. We would have given up a long time ago if it weren't for him. Of course, I understand. So that was your wife's voice that woke me up a few minutes ago, right? My wife? No, that's impossible. My wife has been with me in the other room the whole time. We haven't come out of there for hours, but I'm glad you're feeling better and are fully conscious now. I guess we could say you've been reborn. And although the circumstances aren't the best, simply being alive nowadays is practically a luxury. So, welcome to our home. You gotta wonder the circumstances under which I'm hearing that voice in the first place. Uh, the idea of like somebody calling my name from my own memories and in my own mind and waking me up and stuff like that could be just a simple memory thing it could just be like yeah my name is Michael and so on and so forth but it didn't I don't know if I'm remembering correctly but I feel like it had like a hiss to it like it was a recording and if that's the case like that kind of intentional sound of a recording seems like it would be actually physically playing in the room and not a memory and if that is the case then the whether or not it was even directed at me is, is hard to say for sure I kind of wonder if my name's even actually Michael the Great Wave? What are you talking about? Well, what would I be talking about? That damned, excuse my language, explosion that brought ruin to all of us. The origin of this filthy new world that now seems to be our permanent reality. But do you really not remember? Do you really not remember anything about all this? <sighs> I feel a little weak and dizzy, Mr. Atkinson. Excuse me, I'm afraid I can't. I can't remember a thing. Hmm, I see. There have been many cases like yours in the camp. Try to rest and not to get too agitated. Well, there's one thing I can tell you. You can consider yourself fortunate. There's nothing nice to remember about recent times, believe me. From what you've told me, I see that you've saved my life. I'm very grateful, Mr. Atkinson. No, please. 
You don't have to thank us. We just did what we had to. It's our moral obligation to uphold the ethical principles of civilization in this new world. But call me Rod, please. And, well, we also did it for Colin, you see. What kind of future does he face if we accept that it's every man for himself, that no one cares about anyone else? It's a terrifying prospect, don't you think? We're just doing whatever we can to avoid that future, that's all. Uh, mm, mm. Rod! Rod! Please excuse me, but I have to leave you now. No, wait, please! What's happening? Uh, don't go yet. I'm sorry, I understand that you have a lot of questions to ask me. But now isn't the time. Believe me, I promise to answer each and every one of your questions in peace and quiet later. Sorry, but I have to go. Ah! Ah! Rod, please, quickly! Okay, all right. Now that you're feeling better, you can go out and take a walk around the camp. But please, be very careful out there. The world you knew before is gone. Heed my warning, don't touch anything. Don't talk to anyone. And don't get mixed up in anything. At least until someone explains to you how things work in this new world the Great Wave left us. Everything has changed so much out there. All right. Thanks for the advice. Ah. One more thing before I go. You've been with us for quite a while now, and we don't even know what to call you. What is your name? My name? Michael. My name is Michael. Very pleased to meet you, Michael. We'll talk again later, I promise. Michael. That's what that disembodied voice called me. That must be my name. Wake up, Michael. That's all she said. Leaving me in this immense void. Or I can't remember anything. Great wave? New world? Refugee camp? But what the devil could have happened out there? I think it might be a good idea to go out there and take a look. You gotta wonder. Okay, so he latched onto the name immediately, which kind of makes me want to think that it might be the right name after all. He's not. He, he's, he himself isn't entirely sure, but the fact that he just sort of accepted it so quickly make it means it might be sort of going down familiar neural pathways or something uh sounds like outside might basically be mad max in which case we were pretty lucky to be picked up by like the one civilized uh, group around potentially that doesn't want to mistreat people and still wants to try to keep things the old way but only time will tell if that was mis if that's a uh, naive of them or not the scrap of fabric has traces of blood sweat and other fluids I can't even identify. If this sheet was ever white, it must have been a long time ago. A very long time ago. And you were sleeping in it. The old closet Rod told me about. It's funny. With the glass and the door shattered, my reflection in the mirror is fragmented, like a photo ripped into little pieces and taped back together. Was Jensen here? Impossible. It's locked. I'm afraid my host forgot to unlock it before he left. Oh, had the briefest idea that maybe we'd get a chance to, ch to choose our costume or something for the game. This oil lamp is the room's only source of light. The flickering of the flame makes the room look ghostly, like in a dream. More like in a nightmare. I'm impressed. How do you reach that from the bed and find it in the darkness? It was pitch black. Let's see. With the glass and the door broken and that thick coating of grease lining it, I doubt anything's been baked in this oven for a long time. Nothing edible. It's only the lid of an enormous metal pan sitting on the bottom of the oven. Hmm. There's a very worn old notebook hidden under the lid. The cover is practically falling off the spiral binding. It looks like someone stashed it here some time ago, and then forgot about it. Did they say how long ago the Great Wave was? Trying to remember again. Uh, just wondering if the if the lack of use here is because of the event, or if it's just because it was in disuse beforehand anyway. It's a bit dented. It was used to cover a very large roasting pan. In fact, it still has some traces of food stuck to it. It's an old accounting ledger that still has a few blank pages left in it. From what's written in here, it looks like someone was using it as a diary, before ripping out almost all its pages and leaving it inside the oven in the trailer. What a weird state to live, leave it in. How did you... What a weirdly specific way to rip it, too. 
He's been talking to his grandparents again, to my dead parents. This, uh, what does it say? Oh, his absences are getting longer and more terrifying. His mother is suffering too much. We, we agreed to put the gun inside the cookie box with two bullets in the chamber. God forgive us, but when he's gone, there won't be any future for us. The rumble coming from that gash in the sky still terrifies Colin. The Exalted One has decided to tear open the sky and is urging his angels to punish us through the, wo the wound. That's what Reverend Blake says. He's a holy man. My staff, my colleagues, my superiors? Doesn't anyone out there remember Rod Atkinson? But we have to be strong for the boy. We can't let the great wave strip us of who we are. And apparently we're holding a pen to it, which is a weird detail to keep on the screen, but okay. So it's uh, it's, Rod, it's Rod's uh, diary. And of everything falling apart, more or less. So we can go out or we can go in the building. I can hear people whispering on the other side. It's the door Rod went through after hearing those moans. The same one he made sure to bolt shut. He said, don't touch anything, don't talk t uh, to anyone, and don't get mixed up in anything. Why do I get the feeling the story is going to immediately involve us uh, touching something, talking to someone, and getting involved in something? Nope. It's no use. It won't open. I heard Rod bolted from inside. Good God. What the hell happened here? Rod was right. I don't know what hit this place. But whatever it was, it struck it to its very foundations. Without any mercy whatsoever. What's happening now? You better hide, dude. Don't you know that it's dangerous to show your face when the cleanup brigades come into the camp? You're new here, aren't you? Yeah, you could put it that way. Well, welcome to your new home. I'm Hank, but everyone calls me the Hunter. I'm... Michael. But what's going on up there? Nothing, Mike, just routine. The cleanup brigades are taking away a sick person, a dissolved. You know how it is, just doing their job. Ironically, that house belongs to one of the camp moles. Those traitorous scumbags. Brigades, dissolved, moles. I don't... I don't know what you're talking about. I can't remember anything. Oh, I see. You're a blankhead. Well, you better get up to speed real quick if you want to survive here, Mike. Find me if you need help, dude. I can get you whatever you need. Doesn't matter where it is, how fast it runs, or where it tries to hide. That's why they call me the Hunter. All right. I'll remember that. Come back here! Don't take her away! Don't you know who I am? Come back here! They shot that poor man in cold blood. But... Why did they do that? Hey, uh, Hank? Alright, bye. I'm afraid he's gone. Been playing for five minutes, I already met a crocodile Dundee that runs off like Batman, basically. Oh! Okay. But, what's happening? What is this? What the hell's going on here? The trailer's destroyed. Good God. I think I'm starting to lose my mind. Might kind of need that place, too, so that's kind of a bummer. So that this place doesn't have a good future for it. I wonder, they've talked about the boy a few times in that trailer. Is the boy born yet? Or do they just know that she's pregnant with a boy? I'm wondering if that was the, what the moans were, that she's maybe she's currently pregnant. Where'd Hunter go? He really just took off. All right. This tangle of metal was a driver's door once upon a time. Time has left these hinges bent and rusted. There's no way I'm going to be able to break open this door with my bare hands. So apparently people that have amnesia are in this universe are so common during the the, the current scenario that uh it's not like it's they even have a name for it. They called me a blank head, and that's apparently a reoccurring thing. It's the lot outside Rod's trailer. The ground is covered with trash, scrap metal, and broken glass. Something tells me it might not be a good idea to walk around here barefoot. Not gonna stop me, is it? He must be one of the inhabitants of the refugee camp. What the hell has he got in that shopping cart full of junk? A supermarket shopping cart full of plastic bags, ready to burst. This individual who looks like a bum never takes his eyes off it. 
And the swarm of insects fluttering around the merchandise don't either. Someone improvised a bonfire inside that drum. Although the smoke starts to irritate the lungs pretty quickly, it seems like the only heating system the camp inhabitants have. Ouch! Damn it! I managed to rip open the sole of my foot in a rusty nail. Hey! It's not a good idea to walk around barefoot in this enormous trash heap. You won't get very far without shoes. Yeah, thanks for the tip. The tip is yours to keep. But if you come near my things, you're a dead man. Understood? Wait, I recognize you. Aren't you the guy Rod's been taking care of in his trailer all this time? Yes, I am. Do you know Rod? Of course I do. Everyone in the camp knows Rod. You owe him your life. Don't doubt that for a second. Nowadays, no one in his right mind would do what he did for you. For a total stranger. Yes, I'm very grateful to him. But tell me, can I ask you a few questions? The shooting. Could you explain to me what just happened here? Explain what, exactly? That show the cleanup brigades put on? Someone got <laughs> too chatty and ratted out a sick person, that's all. There's usually a pact of silence in the camp. No one likes to see one of their own in those ambulances. But in this case, the dissolved was a relative of one of the camp moles. Ironic, isn't it? But they shot a man. Yes, so they did. So what? The price of human life has gotten a lot cheaper lately. That needn't surprise anyone these days. Did you say dissolved? Of course, the dissolved. But what the hell's wrong with you? Those people are a real plague. They're sick and, so they say, highly contagious. Let me give you a piece of advice about them. If you see one, run the other way like he was the devil himself. Even if they don't give you that <laughs> deadly disease or drive you crazy with their trances, the cleanup brigades will kill you for hiding one. You saw it with your own eyes. They don't even respect their own camp moles. A camp mole? What is that exactly? A spy. A stool pigeon. It's in the army's interest to control the camp from inside. And so they pay some of the inhabitants to feed them information about what happens on this side of the fence. Who comes in? Who goes out? Who causes trouble? And, of course, who gets sick? They're scumbags, but very well-paid scumbags. And they have certain privileges that no one else in here has. Never trust a mole. They'll do anything to hang on to the favors the army gives them in this hellhole. Okay, I'll take your advice. You're welcome, but stay away from the shopping cart or I'll rip your guts out. Got it? Strange that people seem to know who the moles are. You'd think that a primary goal would be to keep them secret so that they can actually be effective. I've been hearing about an enormous explosion. The Great Wave. What on earth are they talking about? But what kind of question is that? Where have you been all this time? Sleeping in a cave? Well... You could say that. The Great Wave is the reason we're confined here like animals. The entire world went to hell in a handcart that day, and we went with it. I've been able to see that with my own eyes. Can you tell me anything else? Okay, I'll tell you what I know. The Great Wave hit us one Friday afternoon right out of the blue. I remember it perfectly because I'd just come out of an important meeting at that precise moment. I'd made a lot of money from a very fat contract. Yes, sirree, Bob. Very, very fat. First, we felt the ground quaking, as if a volcano was about to erupt right under our feet. I had to get out of my car and run. Then came the explosions. Glass broke. Buildings toppled, and then for weeks, the stench of corpses rotting in the streets. In just a few hours, <coughs> that damn great wave sent us all, with our businesses, our money, and our convertibles, straight back to the Dark Ages. The Dark Ages? Of course! 
Are you surprised? In a matter of minutes, we were left with no electricity, no water, no communications. And after the initial chaos, the dissolved started to show up. And that horrible gash opened up in the sky. That stupid breach up there that no one in this hellhole has bothered to explain to us. <sniffs> the fact is that the remains of the old system only held up for a few weeks. And through the cracks, what you see around you started seeping in. The new world, right? Yes, indeed. You catch on fast. The new world was here to stay. Welcome to the future, son. Not exactly the way you pictured it, huh? Definitely taking the Walking Dead approach here, where the entire world has changed and all the rules are different, but our character was unconscious for the entire period of time where everything was changing. Po probably possibly knocked out just before or during a part of the event itself. How do, we, how do we look at the sky exactly to see this gash? Confined? Do you mean we can't leave the refugee camp? Refugee camp? <laughs> I've always found that term amusing. It seems like things on the other side of the fence work a little better. But here, look around you. Does this look like a refugee camp? It's an army detention camp. <laughs> and you're a prisoner. Once you come in here, you lose everything. Even your name. To them, you're nothing more than a rat. Just another camp rat. You'd never be able to get through the gate, especially if you don't know anyone or don't have any contacts on the outside. Doesn't matter who you might have been before the old world collapsed. Believe me, I speak from experience. If you're just a camp rat, I'm afraid the only way out of here is feet first. I don't know if you get my meaning. Of course I do. Thanks for your encouraging words. You can keep the words, but come near my things and you're a dead man. Tell me about Rod Atkinson. Well, I don't know him very well, but they say he's decent enough. Too decent for the times we're living in. <laughs> Did you know that before coming here he was someone important? I think he worked for the government. And he still has some good contacts on the outside. But they're not good enough to get that stupid do-gooder and his family out of here. Stupid do-gooder? Well, you know how it is. Rod is one of those good Samaritans who think they can save the world. He has helped a lot of people in the camp. But I think he's going to run into problems. I reckon that he's too weak for these times. I don't know how long he'll be able to survive. You said he had a son. A pretty good reason to hang on, don't you think? Ah, uh, yes. Colin, I haven't seen that kid running around here for some time. You know if he's all right? I don't know. I still haven't seen him. His father told me about him. Well, I'm glad he's not anywhere near me. <laughs> that brat doesn't have anything better to do than to try to snoop in my shopping cart. Well, I'll be going on my way. Good luck to you, pal. Just be sure to stay away from my things. Okay, that makes it pretty straightforward in the idea that uh, Colin is already born, already a human being walking around and everything. I thought that maybe the other voice in, that, in the back room might have been some friend or someone that was at the house, but nope. So, uh, no pregnant lady in the in the situation this time. Uh, it appears that Colin's born, and the, f just the fact that he's moaning in some back room, and that they're locked the door, I'm figuring he's probably dissolved, and uh, they're probably gonna try to keep him secret. Hello. Damn it! What's going on? It's amazing. Everything's changing again. Everything. Everything is mutating. And I haven't even moved. I don't understand. I don't understand anything. Wonder if they have a word for that one, too. They have the dissolved, they have the blank heads. Do they have anything relating to people seeming to be warping through time, or am I special?